Greetings everyone, my name is Etherville, and welcome to the second part of my finale of my Let's Play of Mario Vania. During the last part, I defeated Shadow Bowser, got the best ending, and beat both of the boss rushes rather easily. In this part, I'll quickly show off the suits, weaponry, and spells I collected, and then give my final thoughts on this game overall.
With the showcase out of the way, here are my thoughts on this title as a whole. I first got to know about this title by chance. After reading through the form thread for Mega Man Sunrise, which is also hosted on the Mario Fan Games Galaxy website, I decided to view the development showcase subform for other fan games. It's here where I stumbled across this title by chance. Interested in seeing the thread title, I decided to investigate it further. That's when it really piqued my interest. I mean, I hadn't yet encountered a Mario fan title that was made in the Metroidvania style. It was so unique and raised my attention enough that I allowed it as an exception to my rule on not LPing Mario fan games, as there are many great Mario fan games sure, but they're better covered by other people, but this one I hadn't really seen covered by others, and considering how much I like Metroidvania titles, I decided to take this out and do a full LP on this after a few test runs of course, which worked pretty well, although I had to use the desktop capture of OBS in order to get it working, because for some reason the window capture caused huge frame rate dips. Alright, I'll be dividing this impressions piece into multiple sections. First up are the graphics and sound. The graphics for this game are mostly fine. Sure, they can be rather simplistic in more than a few areas, but they get the job done. And each main area is visually and thematically distinct, so I don't really get them mixed up. Now, despite the developer mentioning issues with the enemy sprite styles clashing with each other, that is, they look like they came from different titles, it never really bothered me. You could see it, for example, with the Goombas versus, like, the... For example, the Hammer Brothers versus the Hammer Giants versus the Hammer Masters, who seem to be a little bit of a different style. A more consistent style would be nice, but currently it's serviceable and it's not really glaring on the eye. I will say though that several areas of the distorted Skyfall Shrine had a really annoying, rapidly scrolling background that made it hard to see platforms and enemies. It made me slightly ill in some sense to directly look at the background, so I would like to see that change in the future, as it could be a kind of a problem for other players who have... Uh, physical impairments when looking through those in the, uh, more impairing screens or backgrounds. The music selection was pretty decent to good too. Most of the tracks were taken from Castlevania titles, barring some exceptions. Though, I wish there were more than four unique tracks for the Distortion Realms. As the normal realms all or normal areas, they all had their unique team that was usually appropriate, 
Though I wish that the distortion dimensions had more unique tracks. Well, technically there were five, but I don't really count the uh, Abyss and Distorted Abyss differently because they're like direct continuations from each other. Now, as for the story, well, it was okay. Though some of the dialogue was rather odd and felt out of place from a Mario title, and even a Castlevania title, it felt a lot like a parody of the typical Mario game, though with much more crass humor and language. Though this could be easily fixed with some proofreading, as Mario games outside of the RPG titles like Paper Mario or Mario & Luigi RPG series don't have much story involved. The same holds true for this one, so it shouldn't be too hard to fix up the story a bit and make it more consistent. And now, time for the most important part of this game, the gameplay, and what interested me in, in this title the most. After all, you don't see Mario fan games done in the Metroidvania style. And as far as how it meshes the Mario and Metroidvania styles, I think it does pretty well. Although, what this was also in, in the early game is it being a lot more difficult because Mario doesn't have a melee weapon. Unlike most Castlevania Protagonists who can attack with their whip, sword, or some sort of melee weapon, Mario doesn't even get his melee weapon until... well, never actually. And All of his weapons he can get are either, uh, either require stars, which is the equivalent of the hearts, or magic, but you don't get that for a while. And the magical spells you get for a, for a little while, they, you can't use them infinitely. And because of that, it can result in these situations because of the magic recoil, you can be stuck waiting for any, uh, waiting for it to recharge while having to dodge enemies. And not all enemies in the early game can be just easily stomped on. Like for example the spines and of course bo several bosses. So because of that it makes the early game really challenging and items you can run out of, especially in the early game without many stars or star restorative items. And unless you grind for coins to buy stuff from the shop, it can be a problem which I did have. And the difficulty progression overall is a little bit wonky. Oh sure, the castle entrance was fine, although the boss was a little bit more challenging, though it was fixed in the later versions, which I didn't really show off. The Tangle Gardens was also pretty good too. The pipeline afterwards was also pretty nice, and, it, and in between the Tangle Garden and the pipeline, we had a tutorial of how to use the Fire Flower, a uh, magical spell, and in addition to that, it also shows some of the Metroidvania elements because you could go down there to the area where you would have to access the waterway, but you wouldn't be able to melt the ice. Plus, you'd have all those spinies which you have to dodge, so there was a nice touch over there. Though it was kind of a problem with some of the sushis and giant sharks there. Afterwards came the pipeline, or pipe maze, or uh, pipeline, and that because it was a significant jump up in difficulty, mainly due to all the um, unavoidable uh, piranha plants who could come up regardless of where you're standing, and especially with all the projectiles. I mean, we had piranha plants not only who could just go up, but we could have piranha plants which fired fireballs, ice balls, and stone, which could actually freeze you in place, or stun you in place, and you would take double damage. Considering how much damage they did until you got all of the uh, magic resist gear, you could easily get torn apart, which happened uh, a few times during my LP. But of course, that paled in comparison to the, the area after the next one. The Corridors of Infinity was okay, although though you should avoid the left side because of the very dangerous uh, bullet bill launchers. The charging tracks were annoying, as well as the enemies quite damaging, but if you got the gear from the period segment, it would be fine. Plus, most enemies didn't even fire projectiles other than the Hammer Brothers, but even then, they were a lot easier to, to dodge, and you could actually stomp on them. Unlike for the Piranha Plants, where you actually have to wait to use the fireballs or ice flowers. And then the area after that was a brick wall in terms of difficulty. Oh boy, the weapons factory was much, uh, much boost in difficulty compared to the previous areas. Not only did you have the Panzer be Beetles, which are pretty durable, unless you stomp them, or butt stomp them, you also had the laser, uh, or mecha uh, prana plants, which could fire uh, constant laser beams. And with the amount of health you and defense you had there, it could be easily sentence yourself to death if you're not careful. Not to mention we had the sniper koopas who could easily one or two shot you if you're not careful, which caught me off guard a few times. And not, and that would be too bad, but we also had the uh, force engines or whatever they're called, which could fire fireballs or the constant stream of fire, which was extremely dangerous to your low health. But the worst part was the boss fight. Well, you did get the ability to jump higher, but unless you decided to get that ability where you could uh, double jump, 
or jump higher and then return back to the beginning of the castle so you could actually get the um you can get the wall jump ability you wouldn't be able to access the save point before the mega tromp and oh boy the mega tromp was quite a huge step in difficulty for one if you didn't run forward fast enough you get insta killed sending you right back to the beginning of the factory or midway into the factory or to the save point if you did but in addition to that it could actually crush you on either side of the room if you didn't run up it correctly but the worst part was the fact that it actually had four weapons it had the sniper rifle, it had a boomerang, it could also lock onto your position and fire a laser, as well as some other bouncing tanks. Not only could those lasers or any of those attacks knock you down when you're trying to run up the wall, you could easily get stun locked and then cr get crushed by the, the giant twomp. It was so dangerous that I really could, I got hit, got hit by a brick wall, but thankfully the game opened up enough so I could actually access the next part of the Tangled Gardens, go to another boss rush or enemy rush, and then access the Chamber of Goombas and from there Skyfall Shrine. Personally, I would actually like to heavily nerf the mechanical twomp so that it has only one or two weapons and that you can actually access the save point without having to use the wall jump. Because you need to defeat the mechanical twomp if you want to uh, progress forward in the game. But because you will hit a dead end once you go to Skyfall Shrine because they're missing the appropriate gear. You need to get the ability to butt slide from the clock tower which you can only access from the weapons factory after defeating the mechanical twomp. And from there you can access the catacombs and the game really opens up from there. I do appreciate how open the game gets after the catacombs and after you get the double jump, but I really wish the difficulty progression, or at least intended one, was improved a bit. That, or making Skyfall Shrine be open to the clock uh, clock tower, so you can actually access the west, west, west side of the clock tower, as long as you are able to be skilled enough to go to Skyfall Shrine with the, all the instant dead, not, well, all the bottomless pits. But after that, the difficulty curve was relatively fine. Although some of the areas like the Chamber Goombas did buff up the difficulty, it wasn't so much like a gargantuan challenge like the Weapons Factory was. And I do appreciate how it's gradually introduced that you have the Distortion Realms, and there's one for every major area, barring stuff like the Bonus Area, as well as the Chamber of Goombas. It was nice that we had 13 distortion areas, and there was a hint at Skyfall Shrine's distortion realm that you would actually have to ac you can only access the abyss by going to the distorted area of the Forbidden Cave. Quite interesting. And I do actually also appreciate that each of the distorted areas introduced to new enemies were generally much tougher, but built upon pieces of mechanics, so they were relatively fair enough to the player. And I also do appreciate the, the that it actually introduced new mechanics, as I said, but it also introduced references to older Mario titles, like we had the Raging Piano, some of the Mad Blocks, we even had the, in the real world, or the main world, we had the, uh, I forget the name of that cat, Neon Cat, or whatever its name was, I, I'm having a brain fart now where I can't remember what, it, what its name is. But regardless, I do appreciate that we had some of those easter eggs over there, scattered across the castle and whatnot. Now, as for the relics, which are this game's equivalent to the upgrades in other Castlevania titles, I liked most of them, although some of them became not as useful as they were before. Like, the butt stomp was only really useful in that one area blocking the waterway, but after that, it was only used as a combat ability. I really wish there were more areas where we could butt stomp in the blocks and open up puzzles using that. My favorite of the relics were of course the flying ability and the ability to glide when, from the bonus area onward, as well as me being able to jump on those enemies, as well as the distortion analyzer, although that's a bit different. Though the double and triple jumps were my least favorite because of how difficult it was to get it, uh, get it working. In later versions I got it working better over time, but I really wish there was more tutorials in teaching how to double and triple jump, because the timing for me was a little bit too precise, and considering how much it was tied uh, for flying, it became a significant problem for a few areas, and that's why I had to cut off some parts in the clock tower and skyfall shrine because it kept failing. Although I, be I got better used to it, and thankfully there were no boss fights where it was mandatory to use the a flight ability. Maybe double and triple jump, but not flight, thankfully. And on that note, 
It was true said on the form and some on some other areas in the game that you need to have all relics in order to access all the Chaos Core fights at the end of each of the distorted realms. I actually, I didn't think that was true at first, but then I realized that you need to be able to jump higher in order to access the distorted waterways, you need to be able to glide in order to reach the boss at the distorted Skyfall Shrine, and so on and so forth. So you do need all of them. And the magical items I, I pretty much like, although I really wish there was more variety in some of the items. We did have one item per element, thankfully. Especially with the Chaos Flower rounding off everything, but I do wish we had stuff like light based items a little bit earlier, or one extra one, instead of it being the second endgame item, or second most endgame item. Sure, the Astro Sword was really powerful, but I really wish we had it earlier. Plus, the Goomba Avenger, even though it became kind of like a lethal joke weapon at first, once upgraded and once they got the Sorcerer Necklace and the Chaos Ring, it became pretty much godlike and destroyed everything because it could rapidly spam and create an entire army of Goombas at will. And you saw with during the boss rushes how I was able to completely trounce everything, any ounce of challenge. It would be even faster if I used the magical armor. But I do like the variety in spells, how we have long range, short range melee, and we also have guided spells. I do wish that we had more elaboration on how much Luxat impacts the drop rates though. That would have been much more helpful. And it was fixed later on, where it, sh it was better explained that the Titans actually dropped the ironware. I do like the interactions between most of the weapons and magic. The same with the ma uh, weapons as well. Magic was versatile, but the weapons were even more so. In general, they were originally more powerful than the magical items, mainly because they took stars, but quickly magic trounced them, mainly due to investing more stats and magic regenerating much faster. Although, if I had an equivalent to the warrior necklace, or a star regenerate equivalent to the warrior necklace, uh, I mean the sorcerer necklace, I would be even more powerful. Sure, we had the warrior necklace, which I keep mixing up, which restored stars, but I really wanted something that could cut the costs even further. Well, I already had the cost that could have the stars, but if we could, if I had something that could cut the cost by a quarter, it would be much more appreciated. Maybe then we could use stuff like the bombs and power blocks and completely spam it and destroy everything. Oh well. As for the suits, I was actually surprised. I was only expecting the suits to act like a body armor and not have that have that many creative stats. But we have stuff like the athletic suit, which allows you to jump, move higher. Luigi suit, similar to the athletic suit, but only jump higher. We have the warrior suit for coins, magic suit for magic, etc., etc. Even the shadow suit for the uh, distortion realms. In general, I do like the interactions between the relics, items, and the metroidvania exploration. It really helps uh, bridge back the world and promotes backtracking, as well as exploring and experimenting in new areas. And the peeping eyes, I tanked their inclusion so I wouldn't have to explore everything to figure out where the hidden areas were. And I do like how creative the final uh, chain of quests or items you need in order to get the Astral Sword and the Chaos Flower. You would need the ironware from the titans, but in order to do that, you would need the clock so you could actually freeze the enemies in place and kill them fast enough. And then you'd take that to destroy all the spikes at the distorted clock tower, and they'll go take the Skyfall Shrine, and then later on to the distorted, um, distorted Forbidden Cavern. Although you need to kill 5,000 enemies before that. Oh well. I do appreciate that the, we had the links of uh, opening up more chunks of a areas and how it really expands after your distortion realms are all unlocked. The bosses were also pretty fun to fight, although I didn't really like the mechanical twomp. I especially liked the battle against Kamek, Luigi, and Bowser. At least the first fight against Bowser. Because Luigi felt like if I was fighting against someone who had almost the same abilities I did but completely upgraded to max level or something. After all, I got most of his same abilities, of course even more ridiculous in some regards with the Lightning Lakitu's Bolt and the uh, Goomba Venture. And Mechanic was also a pretty fun fight because I had to dodge all the magic and fire spells, and Bowser of course being the classic Bowser fight. Although stuff like the Enchanted Mirror uh, really trivialized a lot of the game, especially in later parts where I grinded up and got a lot more star restorative items. They really, really, really helped against the later boss fights, exploration and distortion realms, and the Chaos Core fights. Oh boy, the Chaos Core fights. 
Whereas for the normal realm, the boss fights gradually increase in difficulty, starting from the boom 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 all the way to Bowser, the Chaos Core fights, even though from 1 to 13 they're supposed to grow in difficulty, I didn't really have the same opinion of that. Sure, the, the order you would fight the Chaos Cores, or what I mean is, where you'd fight them doesn't really impact the difficulty, it's just the order you fight them. After all, after all, you could fight the 13th and final Chaos Core at the distorted castle entrance if you really wanted to. But there were things like the 11th and 12th Chaos Core being much more difficult than the 13th Chaos Core personally, especially the 12th with having to take care of three different attacks simultaneously, so some difficulty balancing will need to be taken into account there. But I did appreciate the variety of the Chaos Cores and having an extra objective. It's not as good as the Inverted Castle in Castlevania Symphony Night, but hey, it's pretty fun and they explore some uh, new gimmicks. Although I wish some of the distorted areas were a bit bigger. And somewhat more interconnected. And that's what I'll have to say about gameplay. The progression needs some work around the center, but at the beginning and the later parts, it's pretty fun and it really opens up. And it really captures the feel of the Metroidvania style. Although, as I said, it captures it more after... Well, following the Weapons Factory and Clock Tower, when you reached up to the Skyfall Shrine and you can access that Skyfall Shrine or Catacombs, it's really where the Metroidvania fail feel of this game opens up, and why I uh, like this game. If I were to graph my love of this game, it would start up pretty high, go down around the Weapons Factory, and go up after that, after I unlocked the Catacombs, as well as Skyfall Shrine again. So, would I recommend this game? Yes. Although, I would appreciate if there was some balancing done around the weapons factory. If I were to give a score to this game, I, I would say it's about above average to decent a, a Mario fan game title. It needs some certain work, but the core experience, the items, the suits, the weapons, the areas, the enemies, the locals, and the general progression and the style and how it feels like so much like a nice mesh between Ma Mario and Metroidvania, I would definitely recommend it to those who are looking for it different Mario experience, something different from the classic uh, platformer progression of Mario, and something with more of an RPG progression feel, and something more non-linearity in the later parts, as well as more creativity with the weaponry. I'd definitely appreciate it if more people knew about this title, although with Nintendo's current track record, that may not be a good idea. Well then, I thank the creator for developing this game, I had a blast playing around with this. I thank you all for watching this LP, viewers. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next LP. Toodles!